Hello everyone. I just wanted to do a quick video to talk us through a couple things. I want to talk about how to connect to the VPN and then once we're connected to the VPN, how to connect to the VCL. You're going to want to connect to the VPN for a variety of reasons including library access and you're going to want to connect to the VCL to access computing resources uh, for licensed software owned by uh, the university. So uh, to get started, here's the summary of what we're going to do. Let me move these pens out of the way. All right, we're going to do the following. We're going to download VPN software, install Cisco Eddy Connect uh, software on your computer. We're going to uh, run it to install it uh, and, and then create a VPN connection. Then I want to talk you through going to v the VCL website and log into the VCL and uh, of course connect to your desired resource, Stata, SPSS, R, SAS, what have you. So let's get started. So uh, to begin with, uh, where you're going to want to start is you're going to want to go to the uh, Information Technology Services website. And one of the, the things that you can do, if, if you're trying to find this website, just use Google. And with Google, you can just say, you know, I'd really like to connect to, uh, to, to this resource. Uh, and so I'm looking for GMU, Cisco, AnyConnect, all one word, AnyConnect. And one of the first things that will pop up is how to install Cisco AnyConnect on a Windows computer. Now, if you don't have a Windows computer, you see here where it says Home, Help Support, etc. And you go back to, you, you can actually go back here to uh, Virtual Private Network, right here. And you can see that they have a variety of things, like how to use remote desktop on a Mac, how to, how to do it on a Windows, and, and a, a bunch of uh, uh, useful questions. So... I'm going to go back here. So to download it, if you scroll if you scroll down, you can see that there's all kinds of configuration stuff. Probably the easiest way to get started, though, is just to, to click on the, 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 the link for Cisco Any, Any Connect for Windows. And it'll download the, 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 the zip file. Once the zip file downloads, you'll be able to run the installer. Now, I'm not going to run the installer because I already have it installed on my computer. But once it installs successfully, uh, you can just look for it on your machine. So, for example, if you click on the Start button and you type Cisco, oops, and you can see here that I have the Cisco AnyConnect Secure Mobility Client. So then you go ahead and click on it, and it'll give you this dialog box uh, asking you if you want to connect. I'm just going to disconnect for a moment. And now I'm going to reconnect just to kind of show you what happens. So when I hit connect, you can see we get this two-factor authentication thing that pops up. And it's asking for my password. This is my regular Mason password. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Hit connect. Now the two-factor authentication window uh, uh, should activate and I can tell you that right now on my phone I now have a notification so let me show you what's going on on my phone here just put away the um, uh, this guy here and you can see on my phone I have a notification here from uh, the the duo mobile application which is what uh, I'm using on my phone for two-factor authentication show my face here and, uh, and then you just have to find your your application. So here's my Duo Mobile. I'm going to click on it. And you can see here that I have a request waiting. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to accept it. And, and that noise that you just heard in the background was the uh, AnyConnect just connected. You see what I mean? The AnyConnect just connected. All right, good. So once you're connected with the uh, with the Cisco AnyConnect, you now have access to all kinds of university resources. So for example, if you ever tried to get a JSTOR article, um, and that JSTOR article for whatever reason, um, you know, you couldn't open it on your computer. Once you connect to the VPN, you have access to all the university resources, all the library resources, etc. But what we're talking about today, most specifically, is we're talking about gaining access to. Um, the, the virtual computing lab. So, 
let me show the computer screen again. And over here you can see that I've got the website www.vcl.gmu.edu. That's the VCL uh, website. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new reservation. And it defaults to the last reservation that you had running. I had a SPSS 26 by IBM running. And I'm going to say that I want to connect to it now. I'm going to say that I want, I want to do it for an hour. You can see that you can choose you know, different lengths of time. You can see that you can block off some time for later. Maybe you want a reservation, you know, at 10 o'clock at night or something. Uh, what else do you see here along the left-hand side here, by the way? There's current reservations. So if, if you had a reservation, you got disconnected. Um, there's uh, your user preferences, which, by the way, if you go into the RDP file preferences, you can actually change the screen resolution that the VCL will run in. Right now, I've got it to run full screen, but maybe you wanted it to run 1024 by 768, wanted it to run in a smaller window. I always prefer to have it run full screen, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Submit Changes. So let me go back to the, uh, to the new reservation. I'm going to create it right now. And once I hit the Create Reservation button, you'll see what happens. It says I have an estimated one minute remaining. And for that, that one minute remaining, um, the, this, this time length will vary depending on how much network traffic the university is experiencing. Oh, you see it's already ready to go. It, it just popped up here, a button that says Connect. I'm going to go ahead and hit Connect now. And when you look at this, you see here that there's this password it's telling me to use. This is not my password. This is one uh, generated by the university. And it is case sensitive. You see it's lowercase jfz, then uppercase wp, and then lowercase a. That's the password I'm going to have to enter when I start this, this new session that runs SPSS. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the RDP file, which stands for Remote Desktop Protocol. Go ahead and click that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and open the file. And this is where I'm going to have to use this password. So JFZ WPA. I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. Yes, I'm fine with that. And you can see here, here comes our password. Lowercase JFZ capital WP lowercase A. And, and you can see that it kind of looks like it's starting a whole new session of Windows. It is. What this new session of Windows is doing is it's um, it's running over top of uh, it's running across the network. So let me just um, all right. Let's go ahead and accept this. So so this session now is a regular Windows session, and you can see here if I move out of the way, there's a start menu down there in in, in the bottom corner which I'm going to click on, and if I click on it, and I browse to SPSS, SPSS, all right, give it a second, and there's IBM SPSS, so I can now use this resource. Now the advantage to doing this is you would gain access to SPSS, and it's going to um, run on your machine across the network. Um, there are a lot of advantages. Of course, you don't have to purchase the software. That's a big advantage. Uh, and the, the university can give licenses away for free. The disadvantage is, and this is something that we're probably going to see a lot of, you know, as we roll out online across the university, is that a lot of people are going to be gaining access to these resources at the same time. And if anyone's ever, you know, for example, played a video game, where maybe that video game, uh, you know, there's a lot of users on it at all at the same time, it increases the network volume, which reduces the speed at which uh, information travels across the network, and you get a phenomenon called lagging. And um, the lagging connection, of course, can be very frustrating at times. I mean, it'll take longer to connect, it'll take longer to execute commands, and it'll look like, as you click things, that they're not being clicked. Um, now, I, I I know the university is working very hard and uh, upgrading all of its network resources, and I don't think that this should be uh, a, a problem indefinitely, but over the first few weeks I could see it being, you know, a bit of a problem to get started with. By the way, you see that SPSS is now opened up behind me. All right, let me put that away. A second here. All right. So, um, 
An alternative to this, rather than running an SPSS session remotely, and when you're running remotely, you have to keep in mind too that your files are being copied across the network. So you can't save things to the network computer. Um, you have to think about ways of copying them back across the network, either like emailing them to yourselves or mapping network drives or what have you to save your, to save your files. But we'll save that for another day. Um, but what, what you can do is IBM, the owner of SPSS, uh, actually has student licenses available and they work through third-party vendors. So let me show you what I mean here. I'm put our main back up here. And let's get me out of the way. All right, so let's say that you're interested in IBM's SPSS. And you can see here that, um, well, it knows that I've been searching for it, of course. IBM SPSS, um, I'm going to say student, right? And let's see if it brings us to the, so IBM software. Now, of course, you could try it for free for 14 days, which is fabulous. Um, okay, let's see, view pricing. Uh, and then you see that there's a choice to get academic editions. And so within academic editions, you see that there's all these. Uh... So we're looking for uh, for students. Let's view the vendors. And these are all third party uh, vendors. And I, I, I think that uh, so some of the PhD students that I work with have suggested that this Hearn software has the best pricing. And so you can go to the partner website. And you can just purchase a grad pack for $35. These are good for six months, which is more than enough to get you through the semester. So that's a good alternative for those who don't want to have to deal with the VCL and the VPN. All right, just give me half a second here, guys. I'm going to take that off the screen. And there we go. All right, so that should get you started if you want to use other computing resources. If you pull down that drop down menu where I had SPSS, there's other university licensed software, Stata, R. SAS, there's a Linux kernel variants, there's a number of other programs that you might want to use or, 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 or check out. And, and should you be interested, you could actually teach yourself a variety of data analytic software packages uh, while sequestered in your home if you're looking for something to do. All right, that should do it for now. We'll talk to you guys soon and uh, stay safe out there.